Good morning and welcome back to another day of devotions and we're glad that you're here with us today. Uh, and today uh, I'm continuing off from where I left off uh, last time. Uh, we're looking at Paul's charges to Timothy and right now we're in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4 and today we'll start uh, at verse 12 and go to the end of the, ch end of the chapter. Uh, but 1 Timothy 4 verse 12 and uh, before we Read, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you uh, again uh, for the opportunity to come and, and teach your word. I ask you to help me today uh, as we speak about uh, the subject of uh, being an, an example and, and uh, just growing in Christ. And Lord, we thank you for uh, this uh, writing, uh, this, this book that you've given us, uh, your word. I pray you'd help me as uh, we, I teach it today. Help me have clarity of thought and mind and uh, that I would speak the things that you uh, would be pleased by. I thank you uh, for this time, Lord. I pray that you be glorified in it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So here, just for a bit of context, uh, Paul is writing uh, in a time of departure. Last week, or last time I uh, was with you, uh, we looked at the beginning of 1 Timothy 4, and he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And so in this time that Paul is writing, uh, we see that there's, there was people uh, departing from the faith. We, we learn about uh, Demas and uh, many others who were leaving the faith. And so in the midst of, of confusion and crisis, uh, the minister of Christ must continue. So let's read uh, in 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So in the midst of confusion, crisis, and uh, even COVID, uh, we as ministers of Christ, as we learned a few weeks ago, uh, that we're all uh, the servants of Christ, we're all uh, to be ministers of Christ. We as the ministers of Christ must continue through it. Uh, when the world says that there's no point going on, uh, will you continue uh, for Christ? Will you keep going even though it's difficult and there's restrictions and they're not able to get to church? Will you keep going? Will you continue? And so Paul, writing to Timothy here, we see uh, Paul give his charge to Timothy to continue. And he gives him three reasons I see here why. Uh, first, we must continue uh, because we are an example to others. You see in verse 12, No, no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers. And he gives some areas in which uh, Timothy should be an example uh, to the believers. He says in uh, the beginning of this verse, in word. Uh, and the things that he, he speaks about, the things that he talks about. Um, and then he says in conversation. Uh, and in, that word conversation doesn't necessarily mean the the things you speak about, like word, because it's kind of repetitive there, but I think uh, I'd be accurate in saying this, con this word conversation is speaking of your lifestyle and the way you conduct your life. And so Paul's saying, Timothy, be an example in your lifestyle. And then he says in charity, and the, the word charity, uh, when you see it in the New Testament, uh, we have uh, charity and love, and you would wonder uh, what 
Uh, the difference is if we uh, see it in 1 Corinthians 13, we see the word charity used in place of love, and it's because one is a verb and one is a noun. And if I'm correct in remembering this, I believe charity uh, is the verb uh, form. So in the actions of love, And so, uh, in our charity, uh, your love, uh, and then he says, in spirit, uh, I believe that would be your attitude, the attitude that you have uh, toward things, the, yeah, the circumstances of life that you have a good attitude, uh, one that is in faith, he says here, uh, in faith, uh, your reliance upon God, be an example in your reliance upon God, and then lastly, in purity, and that's uh, separation uh, from evil, separation from those things that are against God. And so uh, we must continue because we are an example. Uh, no matter, even though Timothy was young, uh, Paul said, let no man despise thy youth, but be an example. Uh, no matter how young or old you are, uh, we are all are an example to each other. We're all uh, an example to someone, someone is watching, and, and no man, uh, as has been said before, no man is an island. Uh, our actions influence others, and our uh, life is an example to others. Uh, and let it be an example uh, what to do and not what not to do. And so we must continue because we are an example to others, but also we must continue because we have been given the tools to continue by God. We see in verse 13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Uh, God has given us the tools uh, to continue by reading his word. Uh, by We see here uh, to exhortation, uh, to exhorting others and encouraging others. Uh, I'd say that'd be the Christian fellowship. Uh, fellowship uh, is not just spending time together, but encouraging each other in the Word and in the uh, the truths of God's Word. And then also in, uh, he says, in uh, give attendance to doctrine, uh, that Bible truth, uh, the teaching of it and the uh, being taught by it. Uh, give attendance to study it. Uh, studying His Word, God has promised blessings for those uh, who study His Word. Not only read it, but study it. When you study God's Word, God promises to bless uh, that studying. So Paul is saying, give attendance to these things. And then he says, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Uh, this could be the uh, spiritual gift that every Christian has been given at uh, their uh, second birth at their point of salvation. God has given every single man uh, a spiritual gift, uh, as we see in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, whatever your spiritual gift is, God has given you a gift, and He wants you uh, to use it. And he's, Paul's saying, neglect not. Don't forget about it. Don't uh, lay it to the side and not use it. God wants us to use our gifts uh, for the uh, for our ministering in Christ, for our service uh, to God. And so uh, we see here possibly Timothy was given uh, the gift of prophecy or he was in the ministry uh, as a pastor and he was doing the work in the ministry full time. Uh, we see that he was ordained, uh, which was given thee by prophecy, by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. He was or, uh, ordained into the ministry and he was doing that full time. Uh, but whether or not uh, you're full-time or you're, uh, you work full-time somewhere else and you're doing uh, ministry uh, in the time that you have uh, outside of that, uh, God wants us to not neglect the gifts that have been given to us. Verse 15, he says, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Paul is encouraging Timothy here to uh, have his mind meditating or focusing on uh, these things, on uh, the work of the ministry, on reading the Word, on studying it, on exhorting others. Be thinking about that. He's saying, be thinking about it, meditate on it. How am I going to be a minister today? How am I going to study God's Word today? How am I going to read God's Word today? 
How can I encourage someone today? How can I be a blessing to someone today? Be meditating on that. We're not going to be doing these things if we're not thinking about them, if we're not meditating on them. And uh, going back to Demas, uh, we see here, uh, Demas, he loved uh, this present world. His meditation, uh, we see uh, about Demas, he, it says, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. And Demas departed and he left uh, Paul and his work uh, because he loved this present world. His focus uh, was on the things of the world. His focus was on uh, the pleasures of, of life that he could get. Uh, and so he departed. And so our focus, our meditation should be on uh, the things of God, the things of his word, the work of the ministry, how we can get the gospel out to others. And when we focus on uh, living our lives for God, uh, being pulled away and, and drawn into the world uh, won't be as much of a concern. Uh, when we focus all of our lives on uh, the, the things of this world, the temporal things, uh, it's so easy to just get pulled into it and not do what God wants us to do. And so we see these reasons here to continue. Uh, we must continue because we are an example to others. Uh, we've been given the tools to continue by God. And then last, uh, we must continue and we must be careful uh, to not stagnate or regress or go back. Uh, when we don't continue, uh, we must continue because if we don't, uh, we're not going to just stay where we are. We're going to decline. We're going to regress. We're going to uh, become... Uh, weak in the faith. And so he says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Going back, um, they were in a, a time of people just departing from the faith and leaving and things were getting tough and the Roman government was causing a lot of persecution and people were leaving because it was getting tough. And people weren't focusing on the God who had saved them. And so if we take heed to ourselves, we take heed to uh, the truth of God's word, to listening to the teaching of God's word, uh, to teaching God's word ourselves, to others, to preaching the gospel. Uh, if we take heed to ourselves, uh, he says here, For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself, you'll keep yourself from departing from the faith, but also them that hear thee, those that you have influence with, uh, who are Christians, who you're trying to influence uh, to live a godly life. Uh, if you go astray and you depart from the faith, if you stop continuing in the faith, uh, it's not just you that's going to leave. There's going to be people that come with you. And so if we take heed unto ourselves to live the life, the godly life that God wants us to live and walk with Him, have that relationship with Him, uh, it will prevent uh, ourselves from departing from the faith and going uh, shipwreck, uh, to use a term that Paul uses. And we also prevent those uh, whom we have influence with uh, from going uh, shipwreck as well or departing from the faith. And so uh, if we are to continue for Christ, we must remember that others are watching uh, we have God's help. We have the tools that God has given us, His Word, uh, Christian fellowship, uh, to be able to continue in the faith. And then we must remember that when we don't continue in the faith or go forward, uh, growing, that it means that we're going to, going to be regressing. We're going to be going backward. Uh, and so when we, just like if we don't eat, uh, if you don't eat for a week, you'll be very, very, very weak. Uh, physically, and so we will be spiritually if you uh, don't eat. Uh, I remember hearing the phrase, uh, seven days without prayer makes one week. And uh, when we don't grow and exercise ourselves on the godliness, uh, we don't continue, uh, we will uh, get sick. Uh, spiritually, we'll be uh, apart from God. Um, and we won't be growing 
and seeking to become more like Christ. And so today, uh, take some steps uh, to continue growing in your faith, uh, to continue in these times of uh, difficulty and these times of COVID and crisis and confusion, uh, continue in your faith. And thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you tomorrow.